era. So Drupal 8 is a meta project comprised of a lot of pieces that our friends have helped us out with. And we wanted to give you a taste of this paradigm. So there's a lot of soft stuff about what PHP fig is, what the intention is. We're sort of focusing this relationship a little bit through the lens of the PHP framework interoperability group. And Campbell has a few technical examples of why this ends up making our lives easier and better, why we can make more of a difference, and, and so on. So the concept of the six hour session is that we have done up to this point seven or eight interviews with prominent PHP people, uh, uh, um, project maintainers, um, uh, 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 a sort of, what would you call Beth Long, a you know, PHP journalist, developer person, um, and we've got a bunch more coming. So, um, ah yes, radar session, please, yeah, if you think it's worth anything. Um, there's a series of podcasts that I'm releasing, so we're thinking of this session as a kind of an ongoing uh, conversation showing you how we learned, what we learned, and what we discovered, and it would be great if you could come and listen to those. I've got the URL coming up in a second, um, but this is like gonna be an ongoing uh, 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 relationship, I guess, and you can contact us, ask questions, we can produce new material, and we're definitely submitting this for the next couple of Drupal cons, and we're gonna let it um, grow, and we're, we're doing newer interviews, so that's kind of the ad for um, the, the overall concept. This is Cam, I'm Jam, um, Adam is doing another session, so. We're 31 dots pre number consulting. Right, we're from 31 dots pre number consulting. I should, should get that photo in here. Yeah, we should, um, next time. Next I, have a, I have a wonderful title and a really, really nice job at Acquia Evangelist in Developer Relations, and um, it's um, my privilege actually to try and connect you with materials that will help your day as a developer be better. I produce podcasts, I do interviews, I, I try and find out what's going on, I try and um, you know, find the Drupal companies that are doing smart things and help them get those ideas, surface those. Um, my sphere of action, I, I do a lot on dev.upgrade.com and the podcast stream, follow me on Twitter, there's a lot of, a lot of Drupal on there. Um, when I get some time, I put slides on, slide check on that as well. And I'm Campbell Bertessi, I also have a great title and a really wonderful job with Forum One. Actually, the second half of my title, I think, is probably hiding behind the picture. Now, I, as of halfway through last year, I'm technical architect, comma, evangelist. Numero uno, really? Yeah. That's a cool title. Yeah, and yeah, I'm pretty is. stoked about it. So, <laughs> my job, in a nutshell, I'm, I'm lead developer on a bunch of uh, large, project uh, large project teams. Uh, I specialize in big non sites and community sites for organizations. And then on the evangelism side, I come and do conferences and I do talks. And uh, like I mentioned on stage today at the pre note, to me, the community aspect of Drupal is one of the, it's the USP. It's one of the, the really key aspects of this community and that makes our product Drupal strong. So you can send me emails directly at campbell411.com. I would love to hear from you. You can find me on d.o as O the Huge Vanity. But on Twitter, some jerk took that name before I got to it, so I'm Campbell Bertessi, and uh, yeah, love to hear from you. Right, so as we said, um, all of the interviews that we're doing to prepare this are being posted online. There's one with Larry Garfield already up. Today, one is coming out with Lorna Mitchell, and in the next few weeks, like I said, there are going to be at least six more, possibly seven or eight, or an infinite number more. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> hey, so meet the PHP Framework Interoperability Group. A few years ago, a bunch of people got together in PHP and they said, hey, so uh, we're, we're incredibly siloed. We've got this problem that, you know, I'm a Drupal developer, you're a, 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 a PHP BB developer, you're a Symfony developer, you're a Zen developer, and all, none of, and uh, the community was quite fractured, wasn't talking much, and um, we were certainly, as Drupal, we were a, a big part of this problem, and um, they said, hey, like, so in PHP 5.3, we got namespacing. That means I can bring in variables with the same name. Like I can have a day class, and you can have a day class, and we can bring those in, and we can still make them play nice together. Whoa, hey presto. Why that wasn't in 5.0? Larry, you'll have to explain later. <laughs> it's actually wonderful that we have you here so we can put you on the spot. Oh yeah, periodic. But process. as soon as we get something wrong, we're dead in the water, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and at an event called PHP Tech in 2010? Nine. Nine? 
<laughs> See? <laughs> a bunch of people said, hey, so we've got this namespace thing. What if we can autoload all the stuff that we need in together? And there was this uh, autoloading standard created and a group they called themselves the PHP standard group. And everybody hated them and, um, because they say, who are you to make a standard and whatever, and they got really quiet for a while. Um, but this autoloading turned out to be really useful. So today, it's a group of several dozen uh, project leads for um, not only frameworks, but also projects like uh, Composer and a bunch of other things who are working together to define the new era that we're in. So the interoperability era in PHP, the reason that Drupal 8 can use Symfony components and external libraries like Guzzle is because of these standards, and because of these efforts to become interoperable. And I can also say that the result is, in the last few years, all of a sudden there are universal PHP events. There are people coming together at places like PHP World where you have a Drupal track and a Joomla track and a, a Magento track and universal interesting topics for everybody and people are really, really excited to be in PHP now and many more people are saying, hey, I'm a PHP developer. So that's kind of the headspace that we'd like to migrate you into. We are now part of the broadest um, fraction in PHP and we're incredibly relevant and, and people are incredibly excited to have you know, 37,000 um, new brains helping them out with the hard problems, and we get stuff in return, like all of the Symfony framework taking care of some of the hard problems for us as a commodity. We get better security, etc. So, why should you care as a developer? Well, frankly, it makes your day way, way, way easier with some of the magic of some of the external libraries and the things that we've gotten along the way for free. While I find the audio cable that we forgot to plug in, say something smart. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to make a personal confession. Uh, way back before PHP Fig, I had a library of WordPress jokes and Joomla jokes. Did anybody else make fun of the other frameworks like I did? <laughs> Can I show of hands who feels a little bit guilty about being a jerk about that? Thank you. Well, <laughs> since we're off mic, though, I think WordPress is the only one that you can still make jokes about, right? They're oh, yeah, we're supposed to still make jokes about WordPress because, they're, the because they're, the, they're, they're not making any moves towards the HP fit. I guess the speakers but we don't want them to. We want them to? So we should change yeah, so them should. into it aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> so. I have some very, very quick sound bites to show you as we go through the presentation from different people that we've spoken with when, in, our, in our going learning about PHP Fig and this context that we're in. So these are really, really short, basically sort of saying hi, but um, these are teasers as well for the podcasts that are coming out in the next few weeks. And um, the first one is with my great friend, Lorna Mitchell, who is a great PHP trainer and uh, consultant. She writes a lot of materials. Uh, she and I have done a few things together. She was the person who actually introduced me to the PSR standards um, in a blog post called PSR What? And um, as I said, this you will be able to find later today on dev.acquila.com slash podcast. I'm a really enthusiastic PHP user and I am super excited to see Drupal in being just so much part of PHP these days. I've been to some Drupal cons and seeing the, the recent release of Drupal 8 has made me very, very, very happy. So have a great Drupal con and I will see you around at an event or in the issue queue. So I just want to say, if you see the name Lorna Mitchell on any piece of media, it's worth reading. And she has been to a bunch of Drupal cons, so look out for her at some community event at some point. What's really exciting for us as developers in this is that all of a sudden our community has grown and we have people who traditionally would feel like, oh, they couldn't really touch Drupal, it's too much in its own universe, and now they actually care. Now we call them up and do a web and do a, a, a podcast interview with them and they say, oh, I'm so happy to hear about the release of Drupal 8. You've contributed so much for, to what I do. Uh, and of course, vice versa. So the way that actually works, right, PHP Fig is more than just a nice looking website. Um, and some people that are friendly to talk to, they get together and define standards called PSRs. Uh, and the standard behaviors are all optional. Just because you're a PHP Fig member project doesn't mean you have to do all of them, but it means that you are encouraged to. And of course, the more that you adopt, the more interoperable your code will be. That is, the more benefit your, your code gets from everybody else out there in the community. 
So Drupal 8 does not adopt all of the PSRs. Thanks, Larry. In, yeah, in fact, it adopts very few. <laughs> but it's partly because we were planning it really early in the PSR lifetime. Yeah, so, how many PSRs were there five years ago? So first of all, Jam, what PSRs does Drupal 8 adopt? I would say, on a hunch, PSR 3, PSR 4, and PSR 8. That's a very good hunch. <laughs> I typed the speaker notes myself. <laughs> so PSR 3 is a logging standard. It defines how you should interact with your, with your logging. Basically, it's a logger interface. That's one of the first ones that we got into. PSR 4 is the auto loader. Jam mentioned that before. Um, effectively, it's a way to have a single call to load a library that has a ton of dependencies, and you don't have to worry about any of it. You actually can just write your class quite easily and get all of the components that you need. When I was talking about Drupal contributing to the broader PHP world, it, sincerely, the proposed PSR 8 standard is, is, is part of that for me. And it's exporting Drupal's culture of hugs as an interface standard. So PSR 8 is the huggable interface. And I, tru I honestly truly believe that our community and our community spirit is the most important and the strongest thing that we have. And I think it's incredibly cool that Larry, um, who is Drupal's high representative, to the PHP fig group uh, has proposed that, and, and I want to see it adopted. I think it's really awesome. So, some people think it's a joke, but I think it's actually a really, really beautiful contribution. I never joke about hugs. <laughs> Larry never jokes about hugs. Talk about the rest here for a second. <laughs> Overheard at DrupalCon. So, oh. You can applaud for that. That was a hug. We, this is our community, guys. <laughs> So, Jam, what PSRs does Drupal 8 not adopt? Well, you know, the really baseline ones that everybody always adopts, the coding standard and the coding style, somehow we didn't quite get there. But I think, frankly, it comes down to the fact that, for us, two spaces is the one true way, right? And the PSRs have, are completely diluted and have said that it's tab. So, we're pulling out. Yeah, somebody said that we should... No? no, no, what did they say? Four spaces. Oh my god. Somebody, yeah, somebody came over and, and said that we should switch to four spaces, but don't worry, we burned the heretic. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so that's PSR 1 and 2. Actually, we're very close to PSR 1. There are some details that we don't adopt, but fundamentally, we already have a really well written, clearly defined uh, coding style guide that actually most community members tend to follow. And it's a lot of work to switch coding standards. Uh, to all of a sudden, even, let's say, without having to retrain 37,000 Drupal developers all over the world to press space four times. I, I just can't do it. Because it's very hard. Um, even without the training problem, let's just, any volunteers to go through the Drupal code base right. and reformat the whole thing? Yeah, we, so we right talked now. about that with Larry. <laughs> um, Right, so we're sticking happen. with our own coding standards, and we'll see if that, if that ever graduates, if that changes in the future. It, it is a bit tricky to have separate settings in your IDE. PSR 5 has not been officially ratified yet, and it's a documentation standard, so um, we have pretty good documentation. I think that we could actually look to the Symphony uh, community to see how great documentation is done. But in the meantime, PSR 5 is not official. We don't have it anyway. Um, Larry's last bit of work was the caching standard, which is PSR 6, and that was only finished a couple months ago, um, way too late for Drupal 8. And uh, since then, oh no, and just before that, PSR 7 was adopted, which is the HTTP messaging interface. And a couple of projects out there are already adopting it, and we can use it through Symfony and a wrapper, um, but we don't have it in core. And uh, PSR 7 is actually amazing really interesting, and one of the interviews that's going to be coming is with a guy called Bo Simonson, who is the um, maintainer of Sculpin and also the editor, so the maintainer, the person running the uh, PSR 7 initiative. Uh, I think he just coordinator. left coordinator. I think he just left that, but he got that through. Um, and basically, um, it's, a, it's a message response protocol that lets us sh uh, um, put that through any number of applications and get it back in one piece in, in a standardized way. So it, it's, uh, it's going to be a boon for um, uh, modular application design and how we big, build larger applications going forward. It's, it's, it's a really neat, it's a paradox, it's cool. So, Larry, Krell the Crab 
is our official representative to the PHP FIB. Sorry, two clicks. Four clicks. I don't want to speak to PHP from Drupal. I don't want to speak to Drupal from PHP. So that implies that those are different things that aren't part of each other, or that I'm part of one talking to the other. And that's not the point. The point is that Drupal and PHP are not separate entities. Drupal is part of the PHP world, and the PHP world is part of Drupal. And that collaboration has helped us produce Drupal 8, and that collaboration can and should continue to produce not just future versions of Drupal, but better practices, more robust practices in PHP itself. So I would encourage everyone from these two large, robust communities, don't look at them as two large, robust communities. Look at them as different pockets of one larger community that we can all learn from, that we can all benefit from, and together we can build a better PHP for all projects. Thank you, Larry. So what Larry touched on, when you start thinking about yourself as a PHP developer, as a part of a much larger global community that includes a bunch of different projects, you start to realize that PHP FIG is about much more than just standards. Which specific standards do we adopt? What PSRs do we like and what we don't? It's actually about a different architectural mindset, different architectural uh, choices when you're building your projects, when you're building your own custom modules. Um, the two rules that I really try and keep in mind myself are, first of all, never reinvent the wheel. We don't have to do that anymore. And the second is, make it easy to, to use your work in other projects outside of Drupal. Make your work as much as possible libraries that can be exported and reused. So a great example of this in the new paradigm is the PHP libraries that commerce guys are making for commerce too. They're making uh, straight up PHP libraries and then a Drupal implementation, but any other PHP project can go and write their implementation for that as well. Let's see Bernhard talk. Bernhard Schusek is the Symfony framework representative to PHP Fig. We had a knockdown, drag out, fantastic conversation with him and kind of forgot to get him to do a proper sound bite. Um, but he's, a, he's a, a, a big name in Symfony, really, really interesting guy, lives in Austria. And we're going to be talking about his project Puli as well. So this is Bernhard, it's only a couple seconds. So hello, Drupal community. I'm Bernard Trustig, or WebMozart on Twitter. Welcome to the day. Sorry. So that's WebMozart. <laughs> but let's talk about let's talk about the work that uh, he's doing and the work that he's built on. Right. Well, so Symphony is a really good example of that of uh, of how we're implementing those two rules that I mentioned. Um, Drupal eight threw out a lot of reinvented wheels, and for good reason. Right. While we were on the island, we did our own, we had used our, we made everything our own way, our own unique snowflakes, and we weren't going to touch how anybody else did it. So my first favorite example of that uh, is, I think, everybody's favorite function, to hate on Drupal HTTP request. Right, can I get a show of hands? Who has ever been frustrated by this function? <coughs> how many of you people are not coders? Because I, I don't know that I've ever met a Drupalist who hasn't been frustrated. <laughs> yeah, and all, it's, it's uh, well, so this is the artist's rendition of uh, Drupal HTTP request. We built it back at 4.6, 2004, four, I think, five? Five. All right, five, thank you. Um, at the height of proudly invented here mania. So. Uh, Drupal HTTP not request, invented elsewhere. Not invented elsewhere. Uh, it's 304 lines in one function, and it recurses. So enjoy debugging it. <laughs> um, for testing, uh, we talk about keeping functions simple. 
nowadays in contemporary code practices. There are actually ways to quantify how complicated your function or your class is. And one of the really common ones is called n-path complexity. And in short, it's a measure of how many unique ways there are to run your function and how many unique outputs it has. So it actually can grow exponentially. So you'd want to keep this number as low as possible. The guideline that I was taught is that if your uh, n-path complexity is over 200, it's too complicated and it's going to be awful to maintain. Does anybody want to guess what the n-path, not, not you guys who know this off the top of your head. <laughs> Does anybody want to guess what the n-path complexity is for Drupal HTTP requests? I'm going to start picking people. Pick a number. Higher. 1,000. He said 1,000. Do I hear 2,000? <laughs> For you, but 4,000 in the back. Way higher. You guys are nowhere near. 10,000. It's a good start. You need more zeros. Who? <laughs> Keep going. Who wants to offer more? <laughs> One? One lakh. One lakh. That's a big number. I don't remember how to translate that into Western numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100,000. One lakh. Way more. Who gives me 10 lakhs? <laughs> ah, well, what was that? One million. One million. Good try, sir. Good try, sir. Bidding's there, but, closing but now. We're still, we, we need more zeros. <laughs> so tell me in Indian numbers, how many is 25 billion? <laughs> right. How many crore lakh is that? 250 crore? OK. That's the end path complexity of this beautiful thing. So if you want to, right? So if you wanted to test this to completion, and every test of yours takes half a second to run, it will take 400 years <laughs> to run your tests. That's why it took so long to get Drupal 8. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we replaced this old, ridiculously complex and rusty wheel with guzzle. This is like the slickest motorcycle picture I could find. And it's awesome. Yeah, so Guzzle is the super slick, super futuristic motorcycle of HTTP request libraries. Actually, the HTTP standard is uh, quite a complicated one. There's lots of people that attack this space. Um, Guzzle is the one we chose because it has a lot of features in particular. Um, but what we really care about, it's environment agnostic. It means it doesn't matter if you have curl, it doesn't matter if you've got uh, PHP streams available or whatever is going on in your environment, you're running on the moon in a Windows 95 environment, I bet that Guzzle can actually operate. Um, it handles synchronous and asynchronous requests, which actually I still have never wrapped my mind around asynchronicity in PHP properly. It's a bit of a mind blower for me, but Guzzle does this out of the box. Um, it will handle, for me, the headache with Drupal HTTP requests was very often uh, was very often working with cookies. It works with cookies totally transparently, and you can have shared cookies across the whole site, or you can have specific cookies for the one request. And it is so easy, my yeah, so easy my mother could do it. <laughs> I had to yeah. think if she would be offended by that. <laughs> she considers her a power user of her Windows tablet. Uh, but actually, I think the coolest power feature, and I know it's not the only one, but this is the one that I get the most excited about. Uh, who here has ever implemented an API integration, like a REST API integration? Yeah, almost all of us. Right, so to do a REST API integration with Guzzle, you describe the API in a JSON file. This is the, this is the endpoint. If you're using this path, here are, the, here are the properties that you can assign. This is what you should expect back in a JSON file, and Guzzle creates a class for you. It does the API integration for you. That's like days of work off your shoulders. How many lines of code does that save me for every integration? Like 300, right? Uh, 304? Many more than 304 <laughs> lines of code. And of course, we get it for free because open source is awesome like that. So actually, because I'm excited about this, this is, a, this is an example of the JSON that you use to describe your API integration. If you can write this and say, OK, get products is, a, is a HTTP get, and this is the URI, and this is the response class that we should get, if you can write that, you can do an API integration. I can't believe I didn't get a hand for that. I'm so stoked. Can we just get a hand for that? Thank you, Guzzle. <laughs> Thank you, Guzzle. So the other one that I like 
is PHP template. <laughs> Who here has been frustrated by a PHP template in the past? Drupal's theming system. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of themers here. So we wrote this in 2004. Adrian Russo wrote, wrote you know how it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, at the time, the whole concept of a templating engine was relatively new. There were a bunch of people taking stabs at it in different projects. It was not unusual that Drupal decided to do it. Uh, we decided to do it on our own. Um, and it compared really favorably to some of the other things that we, that we saw come up in that time. Uh, in some ways, PHP template is too simple, right? You can put any PHP you like into a template file. No problem, right? <laughs> Has anybody else here ever seen direct SQL queries in a template file? So the best, the but best. The camera needs to catch some of these <laughs> shows of hands. So it's the best awful. template file that I ever saw was 28,000 lines of code. It contained the entire site logic <laughs> in the template for the front page of the site. And the client was wondering why the front page took 30 seconds <laughs> on a good day. I think a little part of me just died. <laughs> right. Um, it's too simple. Template files often have a lot of redundancy, a lot of redundant HTML. If you have three content types that differ in a minor way, you have three template files that are 99% identical. That's nuts. And it's actually really hard to then document what are the actual differences that we care about. In other ways, PHP template is too complicated. Right? We split the process of creating HTML between files in modules and files in the theme. Uh, I have definitely spent long periods of time trying to figure out where the hook theme implementation is coming from, where this particular HTML is getting built. We also tried to create a DOM, an uh, HTML DOM that would work for every use case. DOMs for all the, or devs for all the people of my kingdom. kingdom. <laughs> and every class that you could imagine. Uh, yeah, it's part of why I'm not a themer anymore. <laughs> it's pretty horrendous. Um, and even the fact that PHP template required understanding of PHP turned out to be problematic. At the time, we thought, oh, this is good. You have to use no PHP to use Drupal. Well, it turns out a lot of themers don't. They use more specialized languages. So we've replaced it with Twig, famously enough. So Twig is a much sim simpler templating engine to use. And it can handle a lot more complexity at the same time. And it's externally developed and maintained. <laughs> So template files can extend each other. This is my personal favorite thing. If you have three content types that differ minor, in a minor way, you have one base template that applies to all of your content types. And then you have three other little templates that say extends base, and this is the only difference that you need to care about. Fewer lines of code to maintain it, a lot easier to figure out what's going on. All of the logic involved in rendering HTML can now be contained in the theme. That doesn't mean that we allow you to run absolutely any code in the template, quite, quite the opposite. It's a modern templating language, so you can do things like, like for loops, you can do things like conditionals, but you sure can't query the database and you cannot run arbitrary PHP code. So you can outsource your theming now um, <clears throat> very, very easily and openly without really worrying about your themer uh, uh, white screening your whole site, compromising your server. It's a very, very secure implementation. Um, as long as you leave the uh, database access like, off, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it lets you do, like, you know the bad judgment module? We should make sure that there's a dependency there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adam's favorite, our colleague Adam, who was there in the pre-note with us, who is a themer, his favorite part is uh, it always used to be so crazy trying to figure out in PHP template, I have a variable, is it a, is it a string? Is it an object? Is it an array? Who knows? We're going to guess and we're going to white screen the site while we do it. <laughs> Right? In uh, Twig, you can actually traverse arrays and objects and strings without destroying your website. So another interview that we did along the way was with a guy called Jordi Bojano, who is, uh, who's an incredibly compelling, hilarious public speaker. If you ever get the chance to see him do a presentation, do that. Uh, very soft-spoken Belgian guy who is essentially, well, in my view, we, because he's the maintainer of Composer, um, you know, he's... 50% of the reason why we're even able to have Drupal 8 and this whole interoperability era. Uh, Composer is a huge big deal. He's also the um, 
coordinator of the PSR3 logging standard, um, and he happens to run the most popular PHP logging solution, which is called Monolog. There is a Drupal 8 integra uh, integration of that now, uh, created by my friends in Italy, WellNet. Um, worth checking out if you want more detailed, more interesting, more useful logs than what Drupal give is giving out of the box right now. So, we spoke with Jordi. Okay. Um, all right. Let's do the, the, present, the presidential address. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, hi. I'm Jody Bogeno. I maintain uh, Composer, Monolog, and a few other libraries that you might uh, end up using. Um, I want to welcome you in the, in the broader PHP community and hope that you will eventually like, use some of my projects uh, and contribute back to them. Right, so, <laughs> <laughs> so who here has used Composer before? Okay, so we don't really need to explain what Composer is. I'm just going to skip right over that. Um, I had a real problem with this section I, of the presentation. I was supposed to demonstrate for you uh, integrating external libraries through Composer. And the problem that I have is that it's actually too easy to be worth a demo. And I found that the parts that I would be, I was, would be demonstrating were just Drupal API actually, you know, where do you hook this particular behavior in? So instead, we're just going to do it through a series of slides. Here's the process. Step one, download and install Composer Manager. There are, well, Composer needs a single list of all the libraries that you use in your project, all the packages you use in your project, not just the ones your module uses, uh, not just the one that other modules use, and, uh, but also the ones that core use. All has core uses. All have to be compiled into one big list. There are very good ways to manage this by hand, but if you are at all interested in this slide, it means you should probably be using this module. Composer Manager makes it a lot easier. Um, installation instructions are easy. Enable the module as usual and run one shell command. You're done. Step two, look for the functionality you want at packagist.org. Uh, that's the repository for every project the Composer knows about. Looking for which package you want to use feels a lot to me like looking for the Drupal module that I wanted to use in four, five, six, seven. Um, luckily, they tell you right here up front how many stars it has, how many how many downloads it has. Uh, again, it's how popular the project is that helps you figure out how supported it is. Step three: type composer require into your terminal. You do it in your module directory, so it creates a composer.json file in your module, uh, and it updates the list of re re required libraries for your module automatically. <coughs> One thing that I keep forgetting is to do minus minus no update, otherwise it will actually download the library into your module and you don't need that. We'll do that globally. Step four is tell Composer to update your installed libraries, and that's it, end of demonstration. Just go ahead and use the library, it doesn't matter how complicated it is, it's all there for you. One of my favorite demos that I tried to make was actually the AWS package that lets you do everything with Amazon Web Services from spinning up instances to a stream wrapper for S3. Um, I threw together an S3 <coughs> file system module for Drupal 8 didn't get finished testing it, it's not worth contributing, but the ease with which I got through that complicated part, how do I actually connect to S3, how do I actually create a stream wrapper that makes sense, uh, it was amazing. Right, and all of Packages' functionality is now available to you in your site too. Mm -hmm. So when you code with Composer, you stop spending time writing functionality, you only have to write the Drupal integration steps. Um, for the real mind blower, of course Drupal itself, Drupal 8 itself can be installed with Composer. So can all of your Drupal modules. We have our own Drupal packages. So a lot of people recommend that you don't commit core or contrib modules. You actually just commit your composer.json and have your continuous uh, deployment or continuous integration service put it all together for you at runtime, or at deployment time, rather. So Pulley, has anybody here used Pulley yet? Okay. Oh, so this is Bernhard Schusek's new. new project. Right. Puli is pretty, is pretty hot stuff, I think. It's a sort of Composer Plus tool that's getting really popular. Um, 
As Drupalists, we're all familiar with the dilemma of code versus configuration, that there are certain things that are, at the very least, in a gray area for how you should get them into your repository, how do you actually store them and move them between environments. Um, Huli makes that a bit of a bigger problem to solve and, and is interested in not just configuration, uh, like YAML files, but also anything that's not non-code. Images, CSS files, what have you. Translation files is one of their big examples. The deal is, if I maintain a package, there are probably some non-code elements with it that I want to include. If, you, if Jam wants to use it in Drupal, Drupal is going to want those non-code elements in probably a different directory, probably a different location, in whatever unique environment Jam has set up. If somebody else wants to use it in, not WordPress, give me another. Thank you. If somebody else wants to use it in Zen, their whole architecture is different again. What they want to do with those non-code assets is different. Bully is a way that a package maintainer can write a map for those files so that when you want to use them in Drupal, you can map those to the right locations and the code in the package can figure out where it should be putting those non-code elements. And in June, Bernhard is doing a full pulley demonstration on my podcast. Yeah, heads up. So keep an eye open. I, I expect we're going to see pulley uh, used more and more in Drupal because it makes it easier to get, to get at and use some of those packages projects. So Beth Tucker Long has been uh, doing PHP for a long, long time. She used to work for the mm -hmm. PHP Archi uh, Architect magazine. She's incredibly smart, incredibly capable. And as a consultant, she ends up working on a lot of legacy projects. And the podcast with her that we're going to release is super, super interesting because she gets this whole other perspective that I wasn't even cognizant of when we were thinking about, hey, build this cool new thing and Pooley and Drupal 8 and Cutting Edge and we're all right on time. She's like, I inherit all this old stuff and it's really hard and I have to deal with all the ways that we figured out are now wrong. And um, I really, really like her perspective on how the PSRs will help her job get easier over time but as things get standardized. It's really, really worth checking out. Hello, Drupal. Uh, my name is Beth Tucker Long, and I am so excited that Drupal 8 is out. Way to go. We're very proud of you. And I am really excited about Drupal 8 because it represents so much community involvement, working together. I'm so excited that we have so many big projects from the PHP side of things and the Drupal side of things working together. And I just can't wait to see, with all this brain power that we have merged into this project, where we go from here. Hooray! So listen. Um. Wait, let me do this one. I think part of the reason that I think Beth is interesting is because I think she is an example of what most freelancers and, and, and most of us who are PHP developers have to deal with. You actually have to jump between frameworks all the time. And somebody comes to you and says, oh, do you know Drupal? Sure, I can figure it out, no problem. Sure. Do you know Joomla? Yeah, okay, I can work that out. We wrote this other thing in full stack. Can you integrate it, please? Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to jump between frameworks really easily. Uh, what Beth talks about is that PHP Fig makes it easy to do that. You understand and you know a lot of the tools already. And even if you don't know the specific tool, you know the interface that it implements. You know the, the basic rules of how to work with it. So for example, if you can theme for Drupal 8, you learn Twig. Sculpin uses Twig. It's a site generator like uh, like Jenkins. It just happens to use Twig as a templating engine. And you can just engine. jump right in. Um, there are lots of other applications that are built on Symfony 2. Way too many to mention. Is that the next slide? Well, so let's give it, so to get an idea of. Look, if you're a great Drupal 7 developer, for one, awesome, and you're super employable for another decade at least. But your skills are really, really specialized and a bit hard to transfer to doing other work. As a great Drupal 8 developer, knowing Guzzle, knowing the Symfony components that we've got here, knowing the object or into architecture, dependency injection, and so on, actually, you're incredibly enabled to work not just in Drupal, please stay with us, but to do a lot of other things, to help out in a lot of other places, and to be very, very quickly on board and up to speed with whatever gets thrown at you. So, here are just the projects that Symfony lists as the major projects using Symfony framework components. Uh, Drupal PHP, Laravel, Symfony full stack, easy publish, community silex, Joomla compose, Magento, and so on. B hat is really, really interesting. Um, Subdoctrine, um, 
really, really, really interesting list. Um, but that's not the full list of the projects using the Symphony framework components. This is enough to start several of your own companies and like have a great life. This is cool. And you know, plus minus, how these work once you're comfortable with Drupal 8. Um, plus, most of those with a web front end are going to be using Twig as their templating engine since it's also maintained by Sensio Labs who maintains Symphony. So, you know, you're really, really in a great place. And, uh, PHP unit, another one of my favorite things. Yeah. <laughs> a round of, who here has used PHP unit? Let's get a round of applause. Woo! Only if you've used PHP unit, clap for me. Just give me a little bit. <laughs> right. Has PHP unit saved you time? Yes. 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 I like the applause way, actually. It's nice. <laughs> um, we had a wonderful conversation with Sebastian Bergmann, who is the maintainer of the PHP unit. Uh, this is the testing structure, uh, testing system that is used by a lot of PHP projects now, including <laughs> and especially Drupal 8. I think we should just jump right to his <coughs> video clip. Okay. So, hi, I'm Sebastian Bergmann. I uh, published a I, about 15 years ago, I created PHP Unit to help PHP developers build better software. I'm happy that, um, or I would like to congratulate the Drupal community on the release of uh, Drupal 8. And as far as I know, PHP Unit played some role in it. <laughs> some role. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Good. So, so testing economically is a huge money saver, and as a developer, it. Um, we can test before we commit to our main release and you know we do our colleagues a favor we do ourselves a favor it's a time saver it's a work saver make sure you 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 and your company are, are doing testing as part of you know your workflows it's fantastic and um, um, oh and once you're familiar with PHP unit well it works in Drupal 8 it works in in most uh, every IDE that you'll be using it's useful for anything that's written in PHP so it's an incredibly useful transferable skill again now, so here we are. Welcome to Drupal 8. Welcome to the new world of PHP. Um, I want to call out uh, a fun little thing that's been going on, this, this, this interoperability movement, this idea that Drupal 8 was coming, uh, prompted a friend of ours to put out, some, put out a challenge a few years ago. Who ever read that blog post, Getting Off the Island in 2013? No? 2013. Yeah, Getting Off the Island in 2013. This guy had this crazy idea that because Drupal was, in the future, going to be more relevant to other parts of PHP, that we should like go to a user group meeting or a convention of another project. <laughs> Wait, Pretty without crazy. making fun of them? Without making, like, respectfully, not to troll them. <laughs> so Larry Garfield wrote this post, and it made huge waves across the PHP community. Um, uh, was picked up, of course, in Drupal a lot. Um, so, you can read that post. It's still great. It still makes point. So his first choice was get off your island. Go see what other people are doing. There's all kinds of amazing stuff going on. Um, in 2015, I believe, early in 2015, he made a second challenge, which was build a bridge. Um, <clears throat> and that was, um, wait a minute, I'm blanking on what the challenge was. You, you, you. It isn't there. Go on. Build something with a project. Oh, sorry, Shnee Hall. Wow, okay, it's a little hot now. So, the, the second challenge was build something with another project. You know, don't do it in Drupal, go do it with Sculpt and go do it with, with Symphony Full Stack Goods. So, and um, when we were having our podcast conversation with Larry, we were like, okay, Larry, what's the third challenge? It's a new year now. And he was like, I know. Give back, make a difference. So this year, Larry's challenge to all of us in PHP is to get your name on the contributors list for another project. Please don't neglect to help out with Drupal 8, right? But go make a difference. Go see what's going on out there. Um, they're incredibly wonderful, interesting people throughout the PHP world. There's a lot of real excitement going on. We are more relevant than ever, and we are making a huge difference to other communities as they are helping us. I'd like you, I believe that's the last interview piece for today, and we're well on time. Um, I'd like you to meet my very good friend, Cal Evans, PHP troublemaker. Hi, Drupal Cannon. <coughs> no. 
Hi Drupal, my name is Cal Evans and I'm a member of the PHP community and we are so excited that Drupal is now, or the Drupal community is now helping us learn the lessons that you learned with Drupal 8. Okay, one more. <clears throat> Hi Drupal, my name is Cal Evans and I am Larry Garfield's nemesis and I want you to understand that if you see him, please rip off his desk. I've got a hundred dollar reward that I'll give anybody that will mail me his desk. <laughs> Enjoy Drupal. Hi Drupal, my name is Cal Evans, and as a member of the PHP community, I want to say thank you for all that you've done for the PHP community. The patches that you have submitted as you were creating Drupal 8 have spread far and wide and are helping all of us. So thank you so much for that. And on behalf of all of Drupal, thank you PHP community for all you've done for us and all of the wonderful technologies that we've been able to integrate into this thing we're calling Drupal 8. Awesome. So, thank you so much for coming and listening to us today. Thank you so much uh, for being here, making a difference, being part of our community. Um, as I said, all of these interviews that we've done so far and a bunch more, uh, Geherme Blanco is coming, the maintainer of Doctrine, uh, Bo Simonson, the maintainer of Sculpin, all these people you saw today. It's all going to be on my podcast, dev.acquit.com slash podcast. Please, if you liked our session. Rate it here. If you didn't like our session, find another one to rate. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Did we forget something? Questions? Questions? Answers. Questions? Yes. What is the interoperability situation in other languages besides PHP? Yeah, with Drupal cooperating, or are other languages doing the same kind of stuff that PHP is doing? I don't think so. Um, there's talk of doing more with JavaScript, but the JavaScript community is extraordinarily fragmented. And I have no idea what, uh, what's going on there. Beyond that, there are other languages that are doing cool stuff, but since Drupal doesn't use those languages, we're not really paying much attention. The Let's pretend the answer is just no. Uh, the closest thing that I, that I would say to that happening is moving is uh, all of us moving towards standards as, as a language. So for example, with JavaScript interoperability, the biggest thing that we could have done is make sure that everything is RESTful. We work very hard to make to make Drupal uh, uh, completely lost. Thank you, restful. <laughs> We've worked very hard to make it easy to use a front end framework, a JavaScript front end framework, on top of Drupal. But yeah, as far as I know, there's not a formal movement to make that happen. Yeah, I wanted to get on the same line of interoperability, mm -hmm. so you can connect Drupal to a lot of things. Like there's a lot of efforts going into both REST and real X web services and GraphQL and those kind of things where you can make Drupal appear like it's a CouchDB database or make Drupal appear like it's uh, exposing all its data structures similar to how Facebook does. So, you so in terms of interoperability, there's a lot of efforts going on with Drupal. Then you can connect it to whatever other technology you want. Yeah. Any plan to change uh, database at NoSQL? I'm sorry, any plans for? Changing the database. Over changing NoSQL. the database? Because if you it think of scalability. I mean. Yeah, to use things like NoSQL. Yeah. So yeah. actually with Drupal 7, we introduced uh, a reasonably robust uh, database abstraction layer. So technically, you can put any data source uh, behind it. There are some logistical complexities when you do something that has actually fundamentally different uh, assumptions, like, like NoSQL. So the NoSQL implementations for Drupal 7 tend to be only for specific areas of it. So for example, the Entity API you can do things with, but big chunks of core you can't. You still need a My MySQL database. In Drupal 8, that's supposed to be a lot easier. And now I'm going to ask Larry to tell me that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> 
The database abstraction layer in 7 and 8 uh, is for just SQL databases. Please don't try to put a non-SQL database behind it. That said, in Drupal 8, you should never be writing your own SQL anyway. You should be using Entity API, you should be using the config system, you should be using the key value store, and all of those could be swapped out for other backends. I know that uh, Chex has demoed uh, Drupal 8 running with purely MongoDB uh, already, so it can be done, and you can do it piecemeal depending on what part of the system you're talking about and what part it's going to make sense for. That said, don't discount SQL. It's actually a lot more powerful than people give it credit for, and a lot faster than people give it credit for. Other questions? I like that we've had this, this third uh, speaking partner here. All right, well, thank you guys very much for coming. I hope you have a great con. Thank you for hosting us here, and we'll see you around.